Can you see what's written on my shirt? Manhood is not measured in inches, but in decisions and actions when life pinches. Now, I know that, you know, that can be a very interesting quote. And some people are like, hey, what kind of quote is that? Forget the point. The, word, the measure of a man or a woman is not really about your physical size or the size of other parts of your body. It's really about the quality of the decisions and the actions that you make in your life. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you five things you need to keep in mind to make quality decisions. You don't want to be a victim of indecisions or poor decisions. You want to ensure that life decisions about your marriage, your location, degree of choice, how many children you're going to have, what you want to do with your life, that those decisions hit the right way. Stay tuned, it's going to be an amazing one. Right, before we go into the five points, do ensure that you subscribe to my channel. There are so many amazing videos that will enrich your spiritual growth and help you get transformed in your mind so that you're built up with spiritual insight and practical intelligence to produce results that are relevant here on earth and in the age to come. So, have you done that? Have you, have you clicked? Have you subscribed? Subscribe, subscribe, yeah. now, like, comment, share. <laughs> All right, let's go. Five things to keep in mind to make high quality decisions in your life. Number one. You want to get all the information you can regarding that subject matter. One of the things I enjoy a lot of young people to do is to read and study and meditate and consume healthy information. Why? The quality of your decisions will be impacted by the quality of information that you have. If all you can think about in your life is A or B, you will never choose C because you don't know it exists. If all you can think about is low income and middle income, you never become a high net worth individual because you don't know that world exists. If all you think about is, can I earn $1,000 per month or $10,000 per year, you will never make a million dollars because you don't know that it exists. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. The general principle there is that if you lack knowledge, you will also lack many other things. And it's not because you are black that you lack, it's because you lack knowledge that you lack a lot of things. Do you get what I'm saying? All right, and then don't forget that if you lack, you eventually become slack. <laughs> so get all the knowledge that you can get. Read wide, study deep, read the Bible, read the Word of God, but also read other material that will enlighten you in your chosen field or in different aspects of life. Finances, economy, relationships, confidence, communication, persuasion, charisma, coming across well, social intelligence. You need to read wide so that you can make the right decisions. The word says a man of understanding increases strength. That's very important. So information, information, and information. Number two, you want to engage counsel. The word says in the multitude of counsel, counselors, there is safety. What it means is that it's unsafe for you to make all of your life's decisions by yourself. I see a lot of young people who make decisions about marriage without consulting, leaders, teachers, coaches, pastors, mentors, parents, advisors, they just go, oh, I like that baby, see that baby, see that baby, very delicious, very sumptuous, oh, see what you, and all of a sudden, the body leads them into a body of sin. You don't want that to happen to you. So surround yourself with wise, disciplined, progressive, intelligent, spiritual people who can pitch in and say, why not look at it like this? Why not do it like that? Why not position it like this? Why not wait? Why not exercise some patience so you don't become a patient. Make sense? Number three, you want to be able to take out time for meditation, reflection, observation, and consideration. Whenever you need to make decisions, especially if they are heavy and weighted decisions, you don't want to be in a hurry. I remember a decision I had to make, an investment that we made as a family regarding, don't let me go too deep into that particular thing, regarding a very sumptuous opportunity, right? Um, and they were like, oh, you need to make a decision now. You have to make a decision now. You have to make a decision. So eventually made that decision that particular day. But it so happened that we actually didn't even use the investment for years after we had committed 
resources. And I'm like, oh my goodness, but no, no, I've used money for some other things, right? And so many times in our lives, there's the pressure. Oh, you have to choose now, I have to decide now. Be wary of any opportunity that mounts pressure on you to decide now. Always give yourself that room to say, let me think about it, let me pray about it, let me consult stakeholders in my life or advisors or senior friends or people that have more experience or more wisdom. Now, it does not mean you should not be spontaneous. I say it very often, I'm spontaneous but not random. It does not mean that you should not be spontaneous or you should not seize opportunities without dragging. It does not mean you should be slow to making wise decisions, but it means that you should not make decisions under duress. Pray about it, think about it, weigh the options and come up with something that will pay you for life without the burden of regret. Got that? Number four, engage life. And this one is very important. A lot of people do not engage life. So what happens is when they have to make a major decision, they don't have enough experience, they don't have enough history, they don't have enough resources in their life bank to be able to draw, join the dots on. So when it comes to maybe like marriage, they've never really made any decisions about friendship, about accountability, about covenants, about commitments, about traveling. And so when it comes to marriage, they end up making the wrong choice because they've not engaged life. They've not dealt with the hard, the harsh, the horrendous, the hurtful decisions that they should have made over time. It's like somebody who finally has maybe like 10 million naira. Let me use dollars for our international audience. Somebody who has $10,000 and all of a sudden like, let me invest in Bitcoin. Well, you've never really invested like $50 in stocks or mutual funds or $100 in REITs, right? And now you have $10,000 and you have all of a sudden this burden. Most of the time, they end up wasting the money or losing the money to somebody who was more experienced or maybe even greedy. So you want to engage life. And number five, are you ready for this? You already know, you need to pray about it. Now you have limited intelligence, limited information, limited knowledge. God knows everything. God sees everything before it happens in this realm. God does not live in time. It lives in eternity. In fact, I dare say eternity lives in him because God is bigger than eternity. Eternity is not bigger than God. Eternity is just a concept that we use to try to understand God's relationship with timeless time. So because God knows everything, that deal that looks good right now may end up being very bad. And that deal that looks bad right now may end up being very good. That's why the book of Proverbs says that do not lean on your own understanding, but in all your ways, ensure that you acknowledge him. And what is he going to do? He will direct your path. So before you buy land, before you buy a car, before you travel out of the country, before you invest in stocks, before you get involved in Bitcoin or get involved in Forex, so you don't use your money, for example, Get involved in God and say, God, I'm a child, help me, shine your light to me. Or say, God, I have some information, I have some ideas, I have some knowledge, but what are you saying? What would you have me do? And many times he's going to give you a go ahead or he's going to give you a no and wait until you have a sense of peace or a sense of direction before you jump into conclusions so you don't discover that you jump into the conclusion of a loss, right? Some people claim that they are not athletic, but they are so quick to jump into conclusions. You got that? All right. And now to our bonus point. Are you ready? <laughs> boom, 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 boom. This one is very interesting. It's one that I've used in my life. Learn to learn through other people's successes and other people's mistakes. Now, what does that mean? Observe. To be able to make quality decisions, look for people whose lives you admire. Look for people who have progress in their lives, who have spiritual capacity, growth, fulfillment, joy, who seem to have it going on more often than not, and observe their lives. How do they make decisions? What kind of books do they read? How do they invest? What do they spend money on? Is it on property or, or cars or treasury bills? What are the kind of conversations they have? How do they use language? How do they express themselves? Where do they hang out? What are their priorities? By observing the lives, the patterns, and decisions of other people, you will become more proficient at making wise 
decisions. Now, I believe that all these amazing points have added tremendous value to you. Don't forget, I love to hear from you. So don't leave me alone on this one. Drop a comment right now. Let me know which of these decisions or <laughs> suggestions have made a difference in your life that you've applied before. Which ones are you seeing the new light? Which ones are you going to begin to practice? And which other key would you give to somebody who wants to unlock the door of decision making? Let's know. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell your friends, family, and loved ones about this channel. Watch the other videos in this five to thrive or five alive or five and thriving, whatever. Five your drive, drive your five series. Watch the other videos. They'll really enrich your experience and give you a head start and uh, leverage in life, mileage as well in your movement. Until the next video, ensure that you keep on thriving, keep on growing and keep on flourishing. And I'll see you real soon with another set of five.